Not only can you take a load, you can take the ultimate load. I'm white and I've got everything I need. No one clutches their purses when they're in a room alone with me. And I can drive for any neighborhood I please. At any hour, and the police don't do a thing. So if I see a penny on the ground, I leave it alone and fucking flip it. I'm a straight white male in America. I got everything I need. I'm a guy getting paid more than a girl with a degree. And I can walk down the streets after dark, no one wants to rape me. And I can get a girl pregnant and just as easily flee. Just like my straight white male dad did to me. So if I see a penny on the ground, I leave it alone and fucking flip it. I'm a straight white male in America. I've got all the luck I need. I've got a pile of broken mirrors and I'm walking under ladders and I'm spilling cups of salt. But to me that doesn't matter because my skin and my gender and my orientation are the best things to have if you live in this nation. I recommend it highly. A penny on the ground I leave it alone and fucking flip it I'm a straight white male in America I've got all the luck I need Shit's gonna work out for me Cause I'm a straight white male in America I've got all the luck I need Hey everybody, welcome to the Intellectual Dollar Tree uh, Red Light Edition Because of the heat, we do the show usually 7pm Pacific oh. on my that would be on uh, Wednesdays, right here on Twitch. That's twitch.tv slash Echoplex Media. Uh, you can support this project at echoplexmedia.com. Click the support tab. Uh, the merch is the best way. You could buy a crisis actor shirt like someone uh, bought from us not too long ago. And by that, I mean literally like less than an hour ago. Somebody bought our new crisis actor shirt. With a, it's, it's, it's good. Anyway, I'm producer Dave, and you can find me on Grinder. And I am HK Parent. You can find me on Mastodon at HParen at port87.social. And you can also find me on my couch watching Dropout a lot. Good for you. Good for you. <laughs> so um, we're going to kind of go back to the roots of this show. Um, and by the way, okay. if you're listening on uh, Spotify or Apple Podcasts, <clears throat> we're going to run this more like the post game. We're going to talk to the chat, kind of hang out. You get a t- taste of what the post game sounds like, which might be a little bit disorienting for you because you're going to be like, well, what the fuck is he responding to? But that's okay. You'll also be able to get this for free at uh, eplex.store or patreon.com slash echoplex. We'll uh, release the member show for everyone. <clears throat> um, HK, do you remember Brett and Heather? Yeah. Do I know Brett and Heather? Do you remember Brett and Heather? Oh, do I remember them? Yeah, of course. <laughs> we uh, We put them on academic probation quite some time ago. <laughs> yep but <clears throat> i just haven't heard a lot from them lately so i'm was just curious kind of what they've been doing um, oh my god uh brett's brother was on the joe rogan no, experience. everybody knows that hk you're you're Ugh. everybody everybody here is at the bottom of <laughs> do you think i don't know that do you think the people that listen okay. to the show don't know that uh that's something but we can't yeah, run it's... because joe Lo- joe uh joe rogan tends to be rather litigious if, if you ah, could imagine okay. that so Plus, I don't. I don't want to watch four hours of that shit. Um, <laughs> so I don't know. There, the the cover photo of this was a wind a wind farm. So I wonder if they're going to shit on wind energy. I wonder if they're now like uh, now like like o- promoting oil because it's from the ground or some <laughs> shit. <laughs> I will never understand someone who like who attacks wind energy. Because it's literally free energy. Like the earth is just giving us all this free energy and some people don't want to take it. It's ideological or for certain people, maybe it's a uh, financial. Yep. yep. <laughs> 
Hey folks, welcome to the Dark Horse Podcast live stream number 133. 133? <laughs> 233. Oh, excuse me. 200. Now that is a mistake anyone could make if they were in my exact frame of mind. In fact, they would make exactly that mistake if they were me. It's a cool number though. Guess 233. what? 233. Yeah. Prime? It's prime. It's also a Fibonacci number, which makes it a Fibonacci prime. Wow. Check it out. I could Good for you. You should have Eric to talk about math because I'll screw it up. Give them one camera. One, one. Uh, they haven't changed since we, since we put them on uh, probation or what did we do? We fired them. Academic what probation. Call it? Academic yeah. probation. Um, yeah, they still have that ugly fucking like rug behind them. Yep. Fibonacci number. I missed the wood room. Uh, it was much I miss better. It so much the galaxy brain humidor. There's nothing. There's the. Uh, there's never going to be anything better than that. Um, each each number in succession is the sum of the previous two numbers. So 1, 1, 2, 3, 5, 8, 13, 21, 34, 55, 89, 144, also a good number, perfect square, 233. So 233 is a Fibonacci number. It is the sum of the previous two Fibonacci numbers and it's prime. So that suggests that this podcast is going to spiral in control. In control? Yes. I don't what? see any reason to expect that. No, no. The Fib that if you wanted a controlled spiral, the Fibonacci sequence would be your uh, your your gateway map. Oh, maybe we should have had a Nautilus on as a co-host this week. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, if you were going to have an invertebrate, a cephalopod would be a good choice. But I would go with an octopus, just in terms of. Uh, I'm with Brad. I think the octopus is a way cooler invertebrate than a cephalopod. <laughs> <laughs> okay <laughs> Pro probably <clears throat> almost certainly more delicious likelihood of consciousness yeah less less obviously spiral though so this True. week we're going to talk a little bit about the hope accord mm -hmm. and um a bit of well a little bit about workers compensation laws strangely obviously. not very much um a bit about sunscreen and how truly awesome a lot of people think it is oh no they're anti-sunscreen <laughs> That's good. Maybe, oh, can't say that. Why are they anti-sunscreen? The, the big cancer lobby got to them. So. <laughs> <laughs> like, what? Okay, I could, like, I could kind of see, like, the vaccine thing, because that, like... It, stabby. It was it was the whole, like, right-wing, like, HK, it's grift. stabby. It's stabby. That's why the vaccine... Stabby? Thing. Yeah, vaccines are stabby. Okay. That's why people but, don't like, like them. sunscreen? Who the fuck is against sunscreen? Well, we can find out. They're probably going to say that it's got fucking like microplastic in it or some shit. Uh, it doesn't. I what a frog saw. Sure, but there. That's I didn't. I'm not debating you as to whether or okay. not there's microplastic <laughs> in the sunscreen. I'm just telling you that's what they're going to say. I know. I know you do. Are they both I plants? Do. No, you don't. No, I'm looking forward to learning that. No, it's 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 exciting. It's good for the frogs, uh, and it's maybe that's why they're against sunscreen. Frogs on us. So if you are watching live, join us on locals. We have the watch party going on there. Lots of good stuff going on on locals, and uh, we're not doing a Q and A this week, but we've done two in the last week. We did one. Uh, last last wednesday after our live stream and the sunday before that and those are great fun uh so uh we're able to watch the chat as they happen we've moved all of our q a's to locals please join us there um yeah we put our q a behind a paywall because we were getting roasted in the chat stuff that we want to tell you about to the end except for our sponsors as always we have three sponsors we want to maximize our echo chamber here is what they're saying we truly stand by and uh so you know that if you're hearing us read an ad that we actually truly vouch for them and i would also say it in my case uh, yeah but you're also against sunscreen so like why the fuck would i care what you want to buy actually let's skip their fucking ad <laughs> I'm always curious to see what kind of ghoulish company wants to partner with these two people, but not that curious. <laughs> oh my God, this ad is hell of long. Like, honestly, who's, who is like pro sunburn? HK, people we'll get that to that. Like to I, peel I, I it promise off and you we'll it. get to that part. I promise. I don't want to have a whole sunscreen discourse before they even start talking about it. <clears throat> what I do want to talk about is how long this fucking ad is. I'm skipping ahead five seconds every like half a second here. Skipped ahead so much that it probably crashed the entire Odyssey website. <laughs> the sun is pro sun. You got me there. That is true, Athena. <clears throat> like, what are they, they doing? They work for big sun. Okay, this ad is over. <laughs> I was hard to tell. 
All right, that was a funny ad. Good job, guys. All right. Our green perimeter is off. We're no longer being paid to say what we're saying. Yes. Um, but we still vouch for it. In fact. What we say? Yeah. Yes. See? Very much so. All right. Well, here's the thing. We've gone from a matter of... Thanks for clearing that up, Eric. Not Eric. Brett. A period of the opposite, which I guess is mode elevation. You would, wouldn't you? Yes, I would. Yeah, you did. Um, okay. All right. Okay. I want to talk about the Hope Accord, which is something that many of our viewers will have encountered somewhere. Now, the Hope Accord was just released you have, this you week. Up, yeah, or? you want to pull up the Hope Accord or, if you can? It's at the Hope Accord. Ah, oh, they fired their son. Their son was producing their show. Now they fired him. <laughs> which I will say again. The Hope Accord is a collaborative effort to rally support for removing the COVID vaccines or so-called vaccines, transfection agents, <laughs> from the market for reasons that- Transfection well agents? Yeah, that's a new one. Um, we're gonna, he just kind of fucking, he just kind of glossed over that like it doesn't need explanation, but I think that's what the problem is that I haven't been like like on like remember in clockwork orange that scene where they had the guy's eyes held open <laughs> yeah. where he was watching, they made him watch all this shit that's how i was with brett and heather for a good fucking six months so this is some this is some new conspiracy theory terminology to me so to us both then yeah. the dark horse podcast now on the one hand i will say that response to the hope accord has been spectacular in the short number of days that it's been up we're already well over thirty thousand signatories many scientists doctors and other so that's uh, with uh, how many billions of people on the earth now eight nine <laughs> got thirty thousand signatures uh signed by uh dr mickey mouse so a, more people are con of concurrently watching someone play Minecraft right now than sign like on Twitch somewhere right now than sign the <laughs> Hope Accord. Yep. <laughs> Folks with expertise have signed the Accord. So that's great. And 30,000 is a large number for But it. I'm just going to go in and sign it as fucking Mick West. Then what? They're going to be like, oh shit, Mick West signed this. It's like, dude, I'm going to sign yep. it as fucking Neil deGrasse Tyson. They don't check your ID on these things. Dr. Yep. McLovin. This is an initiative that we have the view on the back end, we can also see how many people are looking at the thing and it's orders of magnitude. Oh my God. We can also not just the people that clicked the thing on it. We can see, well, that's the thing about like, <clears throat> uh, analytics aren't actually generally perfect. Uh, but yeah, you have some idea of trends and there's people looking at it. Yeah. Yeah. I had that in, uh, 2004. It was called <clears throat> Awe stats, AW stats. Ooh, do you remember that? Remember earlier than that? People would just have a view counter. Yep. <laughs> What's going on? So what you're saying is a lot of people are, many more people are looking than are signing. Yes. And it would be one thing. If Wouldn't that be looking. a bad thing? If, if, if a ton of people are looking and only like a half a percent of them actually sign your dumbass fucking document. <laughs> Do they not realize that, that that's saying a lot about it? Right. That, that, well, what I'm, what I'm guessing is that it's been passed around by, there's a, you know, like how, um, for a while there before she blocked everybody madison star moon's videos used to get a lot of hits but um it was generally not people who agreed with her i think that there may be yep. a version of this is happening to them or maybe there's like some glaring grammatical errors in it that are kind of funny that people are pointing out who fucking knows having a negative reaction but we're getting nothing but positive reactions so that but that's because you blocked out. everybody and of course he has those glasses that magnet that have a magnet thing in the middle of them obviously um <laughs> lots are those of people new? are curious about things and <laughs> you know you would expect you know the number of signatories isn't going to be larger than the number of views it will always be smaller for whatever reason but the question is how can we do that the massive number of people who look at this document and resonate with it to actually take the step of signing what frequency it? is the document resonating at brett Oh, fuck, probably <laughs> probably 30 or 60 hertz. Why aren't they doing it? And I think there are a couple things going on. One, I think we have all been traumatized and retrained by the propaganda campaign and the stigmatization that went along with things that happened during the COVID so-called pandemic. So people are in the habit. Thanks for the uh, follow the Soviet conscript. The Sorry about your uh, Plinko because well, almost no matter i feel what like say, brett might be a drama queen he's a giant drama not not as big a drama <laughs> queen as his brother 
we've all been traumatized and reprogrammed. I certainly have. That you're in trouble with somebody, right? Mm-hmm. So I think there's. I got the jab like five times, and I I feel fine. It's a collective action problem where lots of people who would absolutely be on board with uh, pressuring the powers that be to remove these dangerous products from the market would rather not have their name on a list where they've said that. Mm-hmm. Now I'm going to argue that it is essential that that's why that's why millions of people have seen this website and only 30,000 people have clicked the thing to fill out the form it's because they're just afraid they're afraid that biden's going to get them now that the president has immunity (laughs) contributing to people maybe not uh, i hereby decree that we are going to drone strike everyone who signs this their support into an actual (laughs) signature um is the sense that this is in the past the mandates are gone (laughs) that lots of people most people aren't taking the shots so it's the urgency isn't there and i want to make three points that i think will uh, cause people to realize that this is very much a live issue the first one has to do with a friend oh you should go to that website hk and uh, let, let us know how much nasty fucking shit is going on in the background <laughs> like how much how much information is it scraping from you i will oh uh, keep her name uh, how product. many different analytics a friend of, a friend of mine who uh, yeah, products does it use under how much stuff does brave block when you go to that website She's <laughs> is now being forced despite being young and healthy and despite whatever argument there may or may not have once been for there being an emergency i lean towards there was no COVID emergency but whatever all right i mean millions of people died but i guess that's not an emergency you didn't die I didn't die. Everyone acknowledges it's gone. And yet somebody seeking a I was not one of those millions of people to get a booster for no Or do you mean reason. Brett didn't die? Yeah, he didn't die. On an argument. Oh, okay. Yeah. So he doesn't consider it emergency unless he dies. Anybody who did die after the vaccine went out. I mean, we know that the vaccine right? Yeah, like the people who died of COVID when it was first out and there was no vaccine. That was like a retro, like they would have gotten the vaccine and it retroactively killed them through COVID. A weak mind, weak mind. (laughs) First place, there's no uh, collective need for anyone to get it because it doesn't block transmission and contraction. And yet we are still pressuring people to play uh, inoculation roulette with with their health. And it's completely unfair. So (laughs) even just to know that there is somebody out there who is going to have to take one of these shots for no medical reason whatsoever. And wait, wait, what for no medical? No, there's a medical reason to get a vaccine. It's that you, <clears throat> that you and your doctor and the overwhelming literature in the medical and immuno- immunology field suggests that it could help you not get a particular disease. And if you do, it's very unlikely that disease will kill you. That is the medical reason. I'm starting to think that Brett actually doesn't know what a vaccine is. Every reason not to. This is somebody young enough to have children. If she chooses to have children, there's also reproductive consequences. So, you know, no, there's not just that one. I mean, except for that baby's head that exploded. But that was a bullshit. (laughs) Oh, my God. There are thousands of people who are facing that. And many of them are going to take a shot because they have no choice. They don't want to fail to get their permits. They don't want to live here illegally. Um, And for those people, you should do it. Second thing is the CDC just recommended these shots for all people over six months of age. Yes. Now, that is perfectly insane in light. Wait, why? What the COVID crisis. Like that's when a puzzle says eight and up, they're like, there's a puzzle maker in on something now. perfectly insane to suggest that people get vaccinated against a deadly disease it said and they by the way when they say all people six and up there's probably some caveat in there about people who are allergic to components of the vaccine etc 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 and the cdc's recommendation yeah Yeah. there are people who can't get it which is more reason that i should crisis is at the moment at the very least never mind what it once was um but you want to recommend these to healthy six-month-old children for what possible reason even if you thought that these things carried no risk which is obviously wrong they are no no one thinks like okay he is an idiot no one has ever said that it carries no risk at all it says on the packaging when you buy it 
like what the risks are when you go to the store and you like sign the thing to you know you go to the pharmacy or whatever and you sign the thing uh because i guess you don't buy it but you know the pharmacy gives you like a little note card with all the potential side effects like what does he think side effects means like that's the potential harm no one thinks that they are absolutely harmless right he's nirvana fallacying the vaccine yep like literally like there's a warning label on fucking tylenol dude yeah tylenol is actually a lot more dangerous than the vaccine yeah tylenol has killed a lot of people yeah and then the alternative right like it's like you don't you don't compare a vaccine to perfection you compare a vaccine to like the disease that it's preventing or like the ramifications of not getting it. It's not, <clears throat> it's, it's so crazy. I can't believe they're still doing like, it's like, it's like we never left them. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like you compare the vaccine and the potential harms of the vaccine to the potential harms of the disease on a population level, you know? And yeah, nobody said that there's no risk. <clears throat> any medical procedure carries some risk yeah like no one is saying there's not a single individual going to be harmed by the vaccine they're saying the individuals that get harmed by the vaccine are a a smaller number than the individuals who get harmed by the disease and b get harmed a lot less than the disease than the people who actually get the disease and to be fair they're probably pulling information from theirs which there's a guy who said oh made me walk on my hands and that might have been me and to be fair, also, there could be a lot more people who, who suffer, like, any side effects, but, like, a side effect of the vaccine is, like, sore arm. So, it's, yeah. like, 99% of people who get the vaccine are going to have a sore arm. Right, right. And that's the, that's the case for uh, almost any shot, actually, because your body doesn't tend to, it's not used to that. It's like, oh, shit, there's a hole there. Or you put something in there. <laughs> Well, the vaccine actually includes like adjuvants, which is like something designed to stimulate a, uh, a, an immune system response at the site of the vaccine to like get your, your immune cells to come like your white blood cells to come to where the vaccine is. Uh, and that's usually like aluminum because like aluminum will now, trigger now a, you're, an immune you're, response in your arm. The, now you're scaring the chemtrails people. Stop it. I am. Yeah. Aluminum in your body is more likely than you think. But even if we didn't know that, you are taking children who fend off COVID very easily as a result of innate immunity, and you are disrupting the natural. They're not innately immune to COVID. It's that, it's that, it's that, it's that, it's that their immune system does better with COVID than, with old, than older people. They're not innately immune to it. That, that's yeah, not I think he's he's confusing like the innate immune system right maybe. and, and there, we, we've been over this a million times but i don't mind going over it again uh that kid doesn't live in a fucking bubble and if that kid gets covid and doesn't know it can give the fucking vi virus to somebody else yeah so like your innate immune system is the one that will attack anything and then there's your learned immune system will which will attack things that it knows so like what he's saying here is like, oh, we should just leave all of it to your innate immune system. But like, there are a lot of problems with your innate immune system. It can kill you. Like, sometimes you'll die just because your immune system is like, fuck, give it everything we've got. And everything we've got will kill the virus, but also you. Right. That's why, for example, when you, when people are like, oh, this this um sugar pill or whatever boosts your immune system you should be pretty fucking glad that it actually doesn't <laughs> yeah right degree <laughs> of the development of their immune system you don't know what the long-term consequences of that are it may be that in a world where there's covid circulating and it's not a serious disease and it's readily treatable that actually contracting a mild cold-like version of covid when you're young and healthy gives your immune system something to work on as the disease progresses and by inoculating people with a static view of spike protein that isn't relevant to the currently circulating version you're disrupting their own ability to fend off the very disease you claim to be you but absolutely wait a minute. are not what the fuck are you talking about yeah wouldn't, like, wouldn't the immunity if you if you got the og COVID like i did wouldn't your immune wouldn't your immune system <clears throat> gen wouldn't it be 
that your immune system is good at fighting the OG COVID off now and like that the next variant your immune system might not be prepared for the same way that he's talking about the vaccine yes but also like getting vaccinated doesn't hurt your your ability to like fend off other things unless you have like a severe adverse reaction to it like a normal reaction to a vaccine is just ooh sore arm and then you're immune to that version of of covid And sure, if like another version, you know, if you get infected with another version, uh, the vaccine won't be effective against it, but it doesn't hurt your ability to fend off. Like, what the fuck is he talking about? People are asking if he's a virologist and somebody said evolutionary biologist. I would uh, put a caveat on that and be like disgraced former evolutionary biology professor. Yep. Now he's talk show, which is totally fine thing to be amazingly this dude has a fucking doctorate like that's what not the fuck? I, that's i'm not it's not amazing that's that there are plenty <laughs> of cranks who have a doctorate how embarrassed must the the university be for giving this guy a doctorate so babies they can't defend themselves we are supposed to have a right to inform consent a baby's parents are supposed to exert yes that uh that status on behalf of the child and a parent going into a pediatrician's office being told the cdc is recommending this is going to be in fear of being told they're an anti-vaxxer and of course no 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 that sounds like informed consent because the parent could then go well let me you know what uh can can we do this the next one i want to actually read what the cdc says and your doctor would be like that's great right your doctor would probably be like that's fantastic Mm -hmm. but we should make an appointment soon I can, you know, if you want to go read up, can you come back in a couple days? We don't even need an appointment. Come in Wednesday at around three. We'll make sure like, or just go to the fucking CVS after. Does he realize, you know, the little sheet that you get when you, whenever you get a vaccine, does he realize that that is informed consent? Like that's the informed part of the informed consent. And then the consent, the consent part is, yeah, go ahead. And you know, if somebody was more interested, unfortunately, in our current media um, atmosphere, they would have to be a little bit careful where they try to get further information. But there is more information out there and <clears throat> given mm-hmm. to you by good science communicators who can kind of break down what's on the vaccine insert. The problem with that is uh, YouTube uh, pushes cranks. Yep. And so I would, you know, I would if people were doing that, I would just suggest that they get their information from like the science based medicine blog or the insufferable intolerance blog or like credible Hulk or like somebody who has like a history of like doing pretty good science communication on the internet. Um, But I would even go as far to say, just don't get any medical information from YouTube. It's also like, it's also like, I think uh, one of the good things about your doctor, if you have a pediatrician or a, you know, just a regular doctor, you see that you've built some rapport with them and you trust them. And so then you don't have to go be an expert on the fucking vaccine, actually, because you like <laughs> trust your doctor to take a quick look at the literature about it and recommend it because then you can go on with your day, actually, <laughs> like, yep. not worry about all this stuff and stop, stop trying to be a fucking expert on like medical stuff. Like you're not, <laughs> yeah. of course, doctors are, uh, strong arming people into taking vaccinations that uh, have never been demonstrated to cause a net benefit to health so anyway like name them brett name them and the other thing net benefit to to cause a net benefit to health well let's go with let's go with the polio vaccine how many people died from fucking polio Mm -hmm. so the net benefit to your health with the polio vaccine is still alive at 45 yep and even the covid vaccine has demonstrated a massive net benefit to to health like individual health and public health like absolutely most people who got the vaccine didn't have any adverse side effects any bad adverse side effects other than ooh arm ouchy uh but like cancel an episode of local love that kind of thing yeah (laughs) yeah but like the rate of going to the hospital among like not even like dying of COVID just going to the hospital, you know, being hospitalized, uh, the rate of being hospitalized with unvaccinated versus vaccinated people for COVID was a, a massive disparity, right? That's the, that's the thing. in like, 
it it sucks going over this stuff again, but it's it's fine, I guess, because we haven't spent much time on this lately. It's like they just they just hitched their cart to these weird ideas about the vaccine, and they just have to keep doing it because there's no like I think they failed largely as content creators in the culture war, right? Because they just couldn't yep. do it. I mean, they hate trans people, but they they didn't hate trans people hard enough for people to really like them about it. Um. And like the, just the other culture war stuff. So they got to stick on their, they're, they're sticking on this stuff and it's going to be medical misinformation. That's going to be their thing. And I'm surprised that they have kind of specialized in like medical or biological stuff, because I was thinking that 2023, not 2024 was going to be the year that they went full chemtrails, <laughs> but they, they have also not. like, they have this like inability to admit that they're wrong. Like they'll do like corrections and stuff, but it's never anything like meaningful. Like they can't admit like they get, it becomes like part of their identity. You know, vaccine denialism is like part of, it becomes part of someone's identity and they just cannot admit that they're wrong. It's the same thing with, you know, I mean, if you think about it, we could even take it out. Like it's like a sports team in a way, right? Where people become like, you know, and I, I think it's much more harm, much more harmless, probably a lot of fun actually, right. To be like a Raiders <laughs> fan or whatever. And that's part of your identity and you are Raiders shit because then you get drunk with people and watch a football game and that's cool. <laughs> yep. But this is different. Yeah. But like, if you think about like, what, like what kind of, you know, let's not, let's get out of, let's get away from these two people. What kind of existential crisis would someone like Madison star moon have if it occurred to her that chemtrails weren't real? I don't know. I mean, I, I just, I can't imagine like having that much of my identity invested in like just some idea, you know, like I don't, I've given up a lot of things that I've believed because like I read about that they were wrong and I was like, Oh, okay. And it's never really like been that big a deal, but like to someone like Madison star moon, it's like her entire identity is wrapped around this conspiracy theory so like uh, it, maybe it would like give her like you said some massive existential crisis and i think <clears throat> with because these two are just her with academic window dressing in the end right you're mm -hmm. not going to convince them of anything they think they know the truth they think they're spreading the truth and the only difference between them and her is that they've monetized it right i don't think I don't think yeah. Madison Star Moon ever monetized what she was doing in any sort of meaningful way. Do you really want babies to be injected with these things because the yes. CDC is recommending yes. it for whatever reasons of corruption yes. and insanity live in that that agency? No, you don't. And so, um, so like the way he phrases that is so fucking dishonest. It's like, do you really want to eat ice cream if you're insane? <laughs> it's like what the fuck do you mean i want ice cream like why do i have to be insane in this scenario and like i just want some fucking ice cream and why wouldn't we give an insane person an ice cream cone <laughs> yeah it's like how the fuck do i answer that do i really want vaccines to be given to kids if like the people at the cdc are insane i don't fucking know the people at the cdc aren't insane i can't put myself in this like weird hypothetical scenario that he makes up and he just like He's just wholesale made this up and just believes that it's true, regardless of all the evidence that it's not. He wrote, he wrote like a, <clears throat> like a, like a dear CDC letter to them and they like didn't respond to them. So that him because he's crazy. <laughs> so he's like, oh, they're crazy. Not responding. Yeah, to no, letter, I guess see? they're, <laughs> they're clearly this insane. If they didn't respond to this is Brett Weinstein, you sign this thing and you let people know we are not going to let this slide just because nobody's mandating us to take the shots anymore. Okay, and the third reason is wait, let what slide the the recommendation, the existence of a vaccine he doesn't like. I don't know. Yeah, like, he, like he can't. It's not enough for him personally to not take the vaccine. Like he has to stop other people from taking it. If it's a evangelism, essentially. Yeah, yeah. It's a, um, <clears throat> and I also um. Like I like that the terminology uh, that uh, Mark Bankston um, has been using. Mark Bankston is the lawyer that took all Alex Jones's money. He uh, has been using the the terminology instead of calling these people uh, conspiracy theorists. He said that okay, there's people who believe in this stuff, but he goes a level above them. And he didn't use Bretton Heather as an example, but he, they are they are weaponized propagandists, right? They are not yep. just 
questioning the status quo or whatever, like we would think of a conspiracy theorist from, you know, 20 years ago. They're like spreading propaganda and it's being used as a, a weapon in some war that they think they're fighting. And so that's a little bit different. And I like that distinction, right? Because they're not, they're not even a conspiracy theorist here, right? Because a conspiracy theorist might be like, oh, there might be something up with this vaccine. I'm not sure, right? Because that's like sort of like, oh, do you remember? Oh, I don't know. There might be fucking aliens and shit. Do you remember it was like more, <laughs> less certain? Yep. Like the Bigfoot people are less certain. Like, but that's because they're just random people who live somewhere and believe in a Bigfoot or believe that there's probably a Bigfoot. This is something different. This is, this is like a, um, yeah, this is the propaganda that, that, this is the propaganda. This is more about propaganda than about like questioning the status quo. Cause at this point, like he's yeah. been on Rogan. There's nothing more status quo than being on Rogan. Yep. And he's trying to create policy around it now. Like that's what this whole, uh, the, the thing that he's doing, uh, I forget the, the name of the hope something. Yeah, I forget too. Let's just, just erase it from your brain. Yeah, that's what he's trying to do with that is affect policy, right? And he shouldn't be because that's like if he knows that he's grifting, like if he's if he's a if he's aware that what he's spewing is bullshit, then this is completely immoral. Like what he would be what he's doing right now is just like just like horrifyingly immoral. But if he doesn't know, like if he's just like stupid like if he's too stupid to realize that what he's saying is completely untrue then like i don't know like <sighs> stupid people shouldn't make policy damn it well <clears throat> it's i mean he's trying to make policy but like if you think about like the, the what is the the, the change.org where the government will respond or whatever if you have is it oh, it's whitehouse.gov what they they have if you do a petition on there if you get a hundred thousand people they'll respond to it. This isn't even a third of the way to that threshold. It's also not at like WhiteHouse.gov or whatever where anybody's required to respond to it. So, okay, <clears throat> I don't I don't think he's trying to make policy though. I think he's just trying to like keep it going right so that he can pretend that he's <clears throat> out. You know, there's activism is like <clears throat> you know you raise awareness and then you take action and then you hope for positive change, right? He's these people are stuck in the raising awareness part and he's he's but he's trying to trick people into thinking they're at the taking action part because they they're doing some yeah. fucking petition. The petition's stated goal is to to affect policy. Right, right? that's what I of, said. That, that's the the action that is supposed to affect positive change. But the yeah, petition so he's it, trying the, to. Right, but the petition itself is just more raising awareness okay so he's just trying to trick people like i said into thinking they're at the action part but they're just because the thing that they're talking about is fucking cuckoo birds they're they're just going to always be stuck at the raising awareness part just like the chemtrails people are because okay. the taking action mean, yeah. part is hard no yep. and that's actually the, that's that's it that's it actually the taking action part is hard and you have to get people on board people oftentimes people who don't agree with you for on a lot of other things you have to get them on board with what you're doing and so they're just at that part and that's it. They're just raising awareness. And uh, by that, I mean of a uh, Brett and Heather Third reason is <laughs> the, I think another thing is like, he's, he's very stupid and I don't think he realizes how stupid he is because he's also very smart. Like he knows a lot of things. He's very knowledgeable and like, clearly he knows how to learn and how to, how to like come up with ideas so i would say he's a smart man but in like this regard and probably several others he is very stupid and he doesn't realize it i th i think he probably doesn't think he has the ability to be stupid but i mean we all do we're all pretty stupid about something right he just doesn't realize that this is his thing where he's really fucking stupid we are not going to let this slide just because nobody's mandating us to take the shots anymore Okay, and the third reason is the mRNA platform is a potential goal. <laughs> Chad is calling the petition the Honda Accord. <laughs> and the defects of that platform have nothing to do with COVID. They have to do with the way the mRNA shots induce immunity in the body, which puts us at risk because, as I've said many times, 
the mRNA is taken up haphazardly. It's taken up wherever the shots circulate by whatever cells they encounter. When cells produce a foreign protein, as the shots direct them to do, the immune system mm -hmm. regards them as virally infected, and it attacks those cells and destroys the them. The word we're, uh, foreign is wrong. We're, looking, we're, we're going to use the word cosmopolitan. Right. As I often say, if that happens in your liver, it's not a big deal because you can spare some liver cells. If it happens in your deltoid, it might have an effect on your strength, but it, it's not going to shorten your life in all likelihood. If it happens in your heart, it very well might. And the reason is because the heart does not heal its scars. So, especially in the period where you've got a scarring is healing. Scarring, it's very dangerous. But sure. And after it's scarred, you have a heart that will perform suboptimally for the rest of your life. So the idea. Okay, simple solution: family. don't give people the shot in their heart. I'm just remembering the greatest Schwab's that like my, my, my myocarditis. Getting other shots, they're making bird flu shots out of mRNA. They're uh, going to do regular flu. Do people get shots in the heart? for this platform we need to get i mean like shots mrna shots, shots in the heart hk only in the movies they have a special shot that restarts your heart Martin, <laughs> taken off in order to make it clear we're not putting up with this they are not done with us and we have to fight now even though it seems like the pressure is off so um i will say <clears throat> that you um you made a little video about uh, the hope accord and you put it out on twitter and uh and i retweeted what you did and i have been um more or less blissfully not much on social media for a while um and so it's hard it's hard to control uh for uh what i saw next because i haven't been super active but um i don't recall ever before seeing the kind of nasty nonsense coming back at me for anything else i had tweeted mm. Oh, but that's because uh, you pissed off, I guess, a gr new group of people that you haven't blocked yet, Heather. Like, people have been dunking on Heather for fucking years. She's fucking retconning history. She's like, I don't know, people you didn't <laughs> used to dunk on me. The claims of, um, you know, of course they're safe. What the hell's wrong with you? What are your credentials to say such things? Um, these aren't vaccines anyway. Um, you were always pro-vaccine. Like, you know, it, it, all sorts of... Wait, those aren't nasty. None of those are nasty things. Did you hear them? Did you hear her refer to anything like especially nasty that they said to her? If you were listening, mm -hmm. like they said, what qualification do you have for this? Weren't you pro vaccine before this? Those are not people aren't being nasty to her. Asking for someone's qualifications, I guess, if you're like, if you're very sensitive about how how smart you come across to people, I guess you consider you could consider it nasty. But like normal people don't consider that nasty. Yeah. <clears throat> and the like, what are your qualifications for this? They literally lean into the idea that they're qualified because they're former biology professors. So like this is they could she could just say I'm a disgraced former biology professor. That's my qualification. <laughs> but that would be funny if she accidentally said that. Thank you for the bits. Avalon of Babylon internally inconsistent and certainly between them inconsistent, but you know, a, a lot of smoke. Just, a, you know, a, a, a lot of stuff being drummed up by, you know, by and large. Well, speaking I of a lot of smoke, there would be nothing worse than getting high with these two people. Not actually organic individual <laughs> human beings. Uh, this, it felt like campaigns of various What sorts. about I tripping with these two people? I, what, what we I could just run away into the forest. Call all of these now, but, you know, from these like... Hang out with a bird. Of, you know, paid, paid people in Southeast Asia in front of, you know, lots and lots of screens with lots and lots of accounts that they are manning uh, to, you know, possibly bots to, you know, occasionally actual individual trolls. But I think that actual individual trolls are actually a much tinier piece of the way that people's opinions are changed online. Wait a minute. So now these are these people that are disagreeing with her are bots and trolls. This is fucking full up straight up Madison star moon shit now. Right. This is just exactly like, mm -hmm. <clears throat> I think I remember Pain when chills. You, I remember when you talked to her, I think you asked her if she like had considered the, the idea that some people just don't believe what she's saying. <laughs> she got real yeah. mad. At, she got real <laughs> mad at you for that. <laughs> but this is the idea that like, Oh, everybody actually agrees with me. It's just, these are just bots and trolls. Well, the people you're calling trolls probably disagree with you. And for whatever reason, find you kind of funny, Heather. That's my, that's where I'm at. I can't be the only one. There's a whole, for, for like a whole, for like literally for nine months, making fun of these two people was like a cottage industry. Like Matt, <laughs> Matt Brown and Chris Cavanaugh started a podcast called Decoding the Gurus 
primarily to make fun of these two and Eric. <laughs> Friends of the show. Because this is an online poll and it's mostly being um, circulated through online sources. Wait, sorry. Uh, what is your petition? It's a poll now. It's an online poll. Be very so she's complaining about an online poll while running an online poll. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. These people... <clears throat> The marketplace of ideas is um, not treating these people so well. They, they're on one hand, they're <laughs> winning, but on the other hand, oh boy, howdy, are people uh, d d dishonestly making fun of me? Who ran into this? Not. To I think they're winning in the marketplace, like the marketplace of money. I don't think they're winning in the marketplace of ideas. Certainly making more money at this than I'm making doing what I'm doing. Sure, but that doesn't mean people take them seriously. I don't know. Some people do. I mean, you, people wouldn't give yeah, them money. Yeah, but not money. the people that matter. <laughs> but people wouldn't give them money if they didn't believe them, right? The people giving them money believe that they're... There might be some people who are giving them money to get into their locals to, like, see what's going on behind the scenes, but I think there's the, the number of people doing that is, like, two. Sure, but, like, the, the people that actually matter, the people that, you know, have power in the world, don't take them seriously most people you're right joe rogan's pretty powerful and seems to take them seriously i'll give you that the insanity that's coming back in the negative of course they're safe of course they're effective what's wrong with you you're an idiot uh, but joe rogan is is a dumbass stay in your lane you know all the stuff that we were seeing early in the pandemic and i honestly have not seen it for a while and suddenly it's back so that's because people f forgot to make fun of you and then they remembered to make fun of you for a long time. I, during COVID, I forgot to make fun of chemtrails. And then I remembered I need to make fun of the chemtrails people and started antagonizing <laughs> fucking Jim Lee from fucking climate viewer. And it's been fantastic lady. They forgot to make fun of you. All right. There was some other shit. So maybe they just, maybe other people were like me and went back to making fun of chemtrails for a while or the flat earthers or something lady. I mean, what were you, are you, are you, are you mad that you weren't getting the attention or are you mad that you are? I mean, probably, Possibly, you know, her income stream started to dry up a little bit. So she, right. she may have been mad about that. Right. There may be the same number of people are making fun of her and she's just complaining about it now to try to get more people to give her money. I don't know. Yep. So I do think that that is part of what is going on with regard to people going and being like, yeah, but I can't afford. I don't want to have that kind of bile come back at me. Yeah. I, we see three terms I would use. We see bots. We see sock puppets and we see shills. Oh no! It's literally the fucking come get the fuck oh, out of here. Paid shills. Paid are we shills? shills? We're shills, right? We are. Uh, the funny, okay. funniest thing. Um, I forget who Jimmy Dore was texting with and didn't really know that he was calling them a paid shill. Just knew that the um, like the the wording, like that, and he called them a page chill. Page chill. Yeah, he meant paid shill, <laughs> but he called them a page chill. Because he is he's so fucking stupid, he has no idea what he or he was using text to speech. But whatever it was, the fucking Twitter threw a fucking massive party on that. Like, but they sound like they sound like um, they sound like yeah, like this is pretty crazy, right? They they sound like yeah. Where'd it go? Oh well, whatever. I, oh, they sound just like to let you know, Echoplex. Just, just, just to let you know, Echoplex. Most of the people that's on your channel are all sock accounts. You sound like Betty Washam. <laughs> Am I a sock account? I don't know. I'm, that's not I mean, about H you. Parent is my legal generally name. On, things that I, I know that you're here, but things generally that we're talking about aren't about you. <laughs> I hate to I hate to be the one. I hate to be the one to tell you this. That's the thing of that. The thing about, about Brett and Heather's podcast is there's no one there to tell them that. Is that not well, like also is Dave is your legal name. Yes. All right. There are some named shills who make particular points. Some of them, most of them have credentials of some kind or another. What's your definition of a sock puppet? A sock puppet is a real person like at one of these farms where they might be managing dozens or hundreds of accounts that masquerade as an individual with an opinion. It's so not sock a puppets is, is inter inherently someone who is, um, a real person, their real identity is not showing up. They are, they are, they have created or something. Yeah, it's a fake account. 
Do or they may just they, they may just mean that like that guy Drill went. They might call him a sock puppet because he doesn't use his real name. You know what I'm saying? Okay. I think they're just I think they're just talking about people who use a handle. Okay. Anonymous accounts. Or just somebody using a handle. I don't even think it's like that. You know what I'm saying? Even the word anonymous in there. Like Twitter lets you pick a handle. It doesn't ask you to pick your name. So I believe doesn't a sock account do, doesn't that <laughs> usually mean like you're replying to yourself as another account no that's just sad okay um, a sock puppet is think about it it's a sock puppet it's someone else doing the talking with a, a puppet so it could just be like we have sock accounts we have how many facebook accounts you think between me and the media one how many guess how many facebook accounts we have so that we can keep an eye on the i have no days. idea those are sock accounts right okay <laughs> it, but they don't speak much they're um they're very quiet sock accounts yeah, somebody in chat was like, you know, back in CB radio days, they'd be like, this is the real Big Mac on uh, Channel 7. Who's out there? Good good buddies. Was that a sock account on, <laughs> or was that just a, a handle that they used on the fucking CB radio? I mean, that's what I'm saying. And it's like, like, I think the difference between a sock account and just an anonymous account is that a sock account, like you're using it to either promote yourself or like denigrate someone else like you're using it for I, a specific malicious purpose I, if you say so i don't know I, <clears throat> i'm certainly not of the two of us i'm certainly not the one at the bottom of the internet rabbit hole so I... <laughs> okay <laughs> lots of identities and they are voicing all those different identities yeah like shallow backstories but they appear to be you know, they can all back each other up and make something appear to be a common opinion when it's actually one guy uh, typing for all the accounts. Right. And the yeah, that's it. That's the thing is like there, there, there couldn't be 15 people in the fucking comments making fun of our dumb asses. It's actually just one person <laughs> with 15 accounts. <laughs> yeah, there's there's no possible way 15 people could disagree with this person's e this person's username I is not their full name and address. This can't be a real person are increasingly good of course because um you know ai now passes a turing test and so you can basically point a machine at uh, oh it's all ai now too people so increasingly the distinction it's all fake it's all ai irrelevant no one could possibly database. disagree with them that would be great if chat gpt was dunking on them too honestly if i'm being if, especially if it was <laughs> high quality dunks i'd be pretty impressed i'd be like oh shit we do have to worry about this it's gonna take my job <laughs> a thousand or ten thousand times as many machine uh, accounts to sound like people so sooner or later maybe sock puppets go extinct and then you see what look like individuals spinning their wheels arguing with these accounts right and it's just it's it feels tragic i mean this is just a general argument against social media like i would agree with this like let's abolish social media it's well, fucking terrible fuck that i need it um <clears throat> also like they're not now now they're fans. The people who agree with them are fucking idiots too, because they're engaging in an argument on the internet, which I don't think anybody ever did on the internet. I would be, I would suggest to you that the, it could, it isn't possible that somebody sent the first message over the internet, whatever that was back in the days of ARPANET. I, I, there's no way the response was something like go fuck yourself, idiot or anything like that. It's impossible. <laughs> like the fourth message by the fourth or fifth message sent over the internet protocol. Somebody was already talking shit to somebody else. Right? Like, yeah, probably the the GFY, you know, go fuck yourself. Yeah, acronym that that was probably like invented within a year after the internet, right? And that and this was just by Poindexter's when there was only like twenty seven people in the world that had access in any meaningful way to the the, the foundation of the internet. They were <laughs> telling you they were already clowning each other. Yep, <laughs> for sure. It was just the, uh, the the natural evolution of the fucking prank phone call, dude. I don't know what to tell you sad uh, but you know you as the individual who may have posted originally you don't want to jump in and be like just don't engage because then because then that's engagement well but i i've actually i've had some success pointing out to a person who's having an argument with a sock puppet go look at the account mm -hmm. look at who you're arguing with really they've got yeah but same. then you quote tweeted me one night when my internet wasn't very happy and i did like a fucking 900 post thread about what a dumb fuck you are and you'd probably categorize me in this sock puppet account because it probably said something like, I, you know, uh, it's, you know, it's always gay Dave dash something right now. It's French bread pizza enthusiast because of an argument I had with a weird communist. <laughs> 
75 followers and they're following <laughs> 600 people mm -hmm. and you know look at what they've posted and it's like you know uh retweets of sort of there's no original content right mm -hmm. so the point is oh if you were going to manage right they account. retweet stuff they like and they comment in the fucking they go to the comments of dumb fucks that's just me like that sounds like an average account what the fuck is he talking about what he means is this person isn't fucking like twitter brain to where they think they gotta fucking post their opinion all the time they're like actually this i'm gonna retweet this i'm gonna like this and i'm like whoa what the fuck is this hey go fuck yourself you dumb fuck then you move on to the next thing you're like ooh, cat retweet you know like <laughs> He's just, yeah, he's describing like a lot of people on Twitter. A lot of people don't tweet. They just retweet and comment. That's fine. Like imagine if social media had to have, you had to have original content every single time. There'd be like five new things on the internet every day. A person yep. to anybody who wasn't going to scrutinize it. It sounds like a person, but you know, I, I think I must've seen the same picture you did of, of one of these farms where one person has a, computer that's connected to you know a hundred phones mm -hmm. um wait what that wait, you don't have to do that no you, the one computer with fucking a hundred browsers could do the thing brett get the fuck out of here a hundred phones what what would the purpose of that be that's just a lot of extra hardware and then think about all the fucking think about all the fucking <laughs> usb c cables you'd have to re re fucking replace all the time because you got a hundred phones that you're always plugging in and shit get the fuck out of here but like why 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 would you need the phones i don't <laughs> yeah, understand i would the phones you're just adding a step here where you could just get a computer where you have a couple browsers and then you have browsers with uh, like like the Chrome Chromium. You could make infinite profiles and just keep opening Chromium and new profiles that have different Twitter accounts attached yeah. to them. And I just keep <laughs> calling Brett a dumbass, I suppose. <laughs> so he thinks that that a a farm, like a a propaganda farm or whatever, is like one person with one computer and a hundred phones. Right, the phones are just a, the phones are just getting That's in the so way. That's so weird. The phones are just <laughs> yeah. getting like I guess maybe for Instagram because the Instagram and the browser is kind of hot garbage. But even then, like if it's just if if you're, I don't know. Like maybe if you needed something that that had like if you needed if you needed to use something that had that phone verification thing, so you had to put in your phone number. But then, like, why wouldn't you use like a a service online that gives you a phone number? Why would you need a physical phone? What the fuck is he thinking here? This is so weird. Yeah, you could just do a uh, one computer actually, and just a lot, like a lot of browsers. Yep. Or maybe even there's a way to do it with bra like browserless from like a script or something. Who knows? Is worth. I mean, we know that pharma. Give Elon machines. Elon like eight bucks a month, and now you can access the API, and you don't have to you just do it in creating a, a chorus. Right. And it shapes opinion. The danger of this really couldn't be greater, right. right? Because a human being has endogenous mechanisms for figuring out when they are out of step with everybody. And that's not necessarily a good thing. You, you know, when everybody else is wrong, you've got to be comfortable with being right. But most people spook when they think that there is this, you know, wave of condemnation coming at them and if the wave of condemnation is 17 people who've been paid to make it look like a wave of condemnation and all of the people who would be jumping into okay how do i get this job fuck this fuck streaming how do i get this job <laughs> <laughs> uh just move to russia just as soon as you land they'll give you this job doubtful they, they probably have like others. so so much of that stuff comes from like russia and other countries that are like you know, antagonistic to the United States. Cause like, we're so fucking susceptible to it. We're so bad at being online. Them are like hiding under their desk. HK, that's not what would happen to me if I went to Russia. Right. The point is it creates <laughs> yeah, <that's true. laughs> change in a paradoxical direction. You'd slip that's and fall out a window, anyway, huh? Yes. Uh, My airplane would fall out a window. Yes. Nope. Sign the accord. Um, obviously if you don't agree, don't sign it, but I think oh, no, you thanks, Brett. It, I mean, it's very carefully written. It airs in the direction of caution. There's a part of me that wishes in some places it was more aggressive. It airs in the direction of caution. It's, it's telling everyone to stop taking a vaccine. That is the opposite well, of being cautious. Not just that. It's calling for like the immediate suspension, essentially making them illegal. Yeah, that is the opposite of cautious. Also, like... 
The other reason I want to get a job being paid to fuck with them is I could probably get paid to write a script to make it look like they have hundreds of thousands of people that signed this document, but they all have very interesting names. <laughs> to understand, but it's we hard just, to disagree with it. Can we have Zach just scroll down and show? So we, the undersigned healthcare professionals, scientists, and concerned members of the public call for one, the immediate suspension. Wait, of the they wrote it as like, we're all doctors and scientists? So hold on. They're writing it. They're saying the undersigned. They don't mean everybody who signed it. They mean like the undersigned people on the document that's like the okay. that you click on here. Okay. Mm. Products to a comprehensive reevaluation of the safety and efficacy of all COVID-19 vaccine products. Three, the immediate recognition and support for the vaccine injured. Four, the restoration of ethical principles abandoned during the COVID-19 era. That's a big ask. Mm -hmm. And five, addressing the root causes of our current predicament. Even bigger, but, you know, critical. Right. Yeah. And, you know, if, if you do the first ones, the other ones naturally follow. If yeah. you if you say, I mean, it, why did we do what we did during COVID? Everyone else because needs to admit that. that they were wrong and we were right. Because we can't possibly be wrong. Right. That thing that they were saying was like, oh, you know, sometimes it's good if everyone around you is telling you that you're wrong, but only if you're wrong. But if you're actually right because you agree with us, then, then it's not good that everybody tells you. I would suggest to you that like <clears throat> on, on this kind of stuff, everyone around you thinking you're an idiot is probably a good sign that you're being an idiot. Yep. Like or at least the entirety if everybody, if everybody, of the medical if, establishment. If everybody doesn't like your boyfriend or your girlfriend, I don't know, maybe they all want to fuck you and you have to think about that. But like, this is not that. This is not an interpersonal thing. That story reveals the dysfunction of the system. Not only was it important as a story, but the story itself, the way it flowed through the media, the way it, it affected online behavior, the way it revealed the connection between government and the social media platforms. It told us what world we live in, and it, it's the Truman Show. So, Oh, I wish someone would Truman Show these two motherfuckers. How does he mean it's the Truman Show? Uh, he's never. He doesn't know what he's talking about. I, I, bet, okay, I wish, like somebody, even would, I wish in, somebody would Truman show these two motherfuckers where like they, <laughs> they walk outside and nobody takes the vaccine. Everybody thinks they're brilliant scientists, but it's all just happening on a movie set that they're not aware of. <laughs> yeah. That I think they did to David Miscavige's wife, Shelly, Scientologist guy. I think they Truman showed her. Well, like e even, even if you're taking his conspiracy at face value, his conspiracy theory at face value, how is that? Truman Show. That's what I'm saying. Is he just? It's, it's he doesn't understand the Truman Show. Yeah, it's. Okay. I don't think it's applicable here. He could have said that they were being gaslighted, and that wouldn't matter either because that word doesn't even mean anything anymore. Because everybody just uses it to mean you said something I don't like. No, those shots have to be pulled. It not another person should be. Orwellian is another thing that doesn't fucking mean anything anymore. By these things, there's no reason for it. There's no demonstration of net benefit. Um. There's certainly no reason to inject a healthy young person. There's just no argument. I don't even know what the argument is. That's like literally what a vaccine is, is injecting oh. or uh, and otherwise inoculating a healthy person so that they remain free of the disease or free of its worst uh, symptoms. That's what it's for, Brett. Yeah, there are some diseases where you, uh, you get inoculated after you've come in contact with the infection like rabies for example you get bit by a rabid animal and then you go get the vaccine and it'll work but yeah most things you you get inoculated before you get exposed to it that's how it works i mean this is just more evidence that brett doesn't know what a fucking vaccine is or he knows <clears throat> he knows enough to uh, spin a tale about it that isn't accurate right I don't know what he knows. I just know what he says. And the things that they say are, I thought they were going to get more ridiculous, but we haven't gotten to the windmills or the fucking sunscreen yet. In light of so. what the evidence says. Yeah. Um, so given all that, let's follow through. Let's get the shots, which are the most concentrated element of harm dealt with. Let's get them off the market. And then let's reevaluate. How did we get here? What happened to academia? Where, mm -hmm. you know, uh, they, 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 they paid you $500,000 to go away. Universities that said, you know, we've looked at the evidence and it doesn't add up. Not a one. 
right? Yeah, Nobody. They were too busy instituting mandates. Maybe there's a reason for that, Brett. Don't you? Well, like, how can a person not think? Okay, none of academia and none of the medical community agree with my interpretation of this data. Therefore, they're all wrong. Like, how can you not see that and go, I bet I'm wrong. I, I bet, you know, I'm, or I'm even, probably or even, wrong here. I'm the one that's probably wrong here. Or what if I could be wrong here, even? Or, yeah. yeah. Um, I feel like there might be a way in which delusions of grandeur runs in Brett's family. <laughs> I have a sample set of two. So, you know, the, we wouldn't be able to um, prove anything definitively. <laughs> but it is 100% of those two. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> more research is needed, so their parents need to pop out a bunch more kids. We'll see. <laughs> oh, God, please no. <laughs> that can be a fourth thing on the list. There are mandates in some places, like several universities. Those kids don't need to get injected with this stuff. It's insane. Yep. It sure is. All right. Um, well, I've got three things that I, that I want to bring to the table. I don't know what the through line is. I don't think there's a through line. Um, oh, I hope windmills, sunscreen, and chemtrails. Come on. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you can figure out what the through line is. All right, I'm is. finding the through line. So enough so that I actually have, I could have <clears throat> just thrown these three topics up in the air and been like, I, whatever order we want to discuss them in is fine. Okay, um, so just fucking stop, stop telling me about the thing you're about to tell me. They're padding this. They pad this shit always. <laughs> I'm trying to like get to the point and be as concise as I can so I can move on to some other dumb fuck shit. And uh, these people are just like, we need to make this as long as possible. I mean, they have like two hours to fill and like nothing substantive to talk about themselves. We're going to start uh, with, with um, an idea from Charlie Munger. Uh, so you, you, know who this is much more than I do. Um, he uh, was, he, he's dead now, was the partner of uh, Warren Buffett. Um, Berkshire Hathaway. Berkshire Hath, the, the founders and leads on in Berkshire Hathaway. And, uh, and, and you recently got uh, Poor Charlie's Almanac, his book. Um, he's mm -hmm. a big fan of Ben Franklin, and so that's obviously um, you know, named after um, Poor Richard's Almanac. Um, yeah. But why is Richard Benjamin Franklin? I don't know. Shut up. <laughs> Stop talking about things you haven't read. I'm confused now. <laughs> but um, you confused by what? By your own tr trying to just like what? What did you just fucking? Did, never mind. I don't even want to get into uh, it. Fuck it. And you put you recently put that on our Audible account, and uh, I swooped in and started listening to it. Um, and I'm I'm not all the way done, but there is an idea in it. Um, there are several ideas, but there is a particular idea that that kind of crystallized for me some of what I think, um, some of how it is that I and I believe we have always been out of step with the with the left to which we always assumed we belonged. Uh, but so I don't even like this. Like they, they are, <clears throat> I hate this shit, right? Because I don't like, <clears throat> I'm not interested in their opinions on healthcare. They probably have, an, they probably share opinions, like not on like how it's administered, obviously, but like who pays for it. I bet they're for government healthcare, mm -hmm. <clears throat> some version of single mm -hmm. payer. Like, I don't care what they think about the fucking minimum wage. I don't care what they think about fucking unions, right? Cause that's not what their content is about. So what I have to do is what we yeah. do is we look at their content. And it used to be that, um, that, and it may have been false, but that anti-vaccine stuff was sort of associated with the left, like sort of hippie shit. I don't think that was always, I don't think that was necessarily true, but that's where it was associated now, uh, because things have changed is now associated with like contrarian elements of the center and the, and contrarian, like anti-science elements of the right. It's just who it's associated with. So I don't care if you live in Portland and go to a hipster coffee shop at the, the, your content is the only thing I'm looking at. Um, and that's it. I don't care what you think about progressive taxation. Right? Like, <laughs> yep. First, maybe you want to say a few things. Yeah. Well, I just, I have an anecdote, which I think will give the audience a, a, a oh, sense of fuck. why Charlie. Fuck. Fuck. I got, shut up. I don't care. I'll just stop telling stories, Brett. Um, so that's really lucky. I'm not his co-host. I'd be like, nobody cares about your story. Pure happenstance. <laughs> I didn't have even very many conversations with him, but I briefly went to school with his son many years ago in Los Angeles. Um, 
and I had heard the name in high school. I had heard the name Charlie Munger, but didn't really know. I knew that he was an extremely wealthy guy, you know, that people quoted him every now and again. Um, but I didn't really have a relationship with the idea of Charlie Munger and didn't know why I should be paying attention to him. Um, <laughs> Fucking, I don't that's care. That's a weird whether, way to put it. I don't care whether or not you know him, Brad. A relationship with the idea of Charlie Munger? That's such a weird way of putting it. It's just, it's just like when you... It's like when your whole brand is that I am smart. You end up saying things that you think sound smart but are just weird yep <laughs> and i saw a interaction two incredibly old guys sitting on stage talking about the philosophy of life that had made them successful and insightful and you know basically oh god you were at dream force telling young people the, what, what somebody should have told them mm -hmm. and they were both interesting and insightful, both, uh, you know, had clear humility. Nobody. Uh, they were funny. Okay, so, like, who, the, I, now I just don't like these people. Thanks, Brian. <laughs> this one guy really impressed me. And I'm like, that dude's old. I really want to have him on the podcast, and I want to talk to him. And obviously. I hope he I tells just, Brett to go fuck himself in just this <laughs> fucking way that, like, an old crotchety man has the ability to tell somebody to go fuck themselves. <laughs> the essence because he's so old well it turned out that the video i was watching was released after his death as people were sort of reviewing mm. um well but you, you know, could just have fucking you can have like somebody come on you can have like a fucking somebody who talks to the dead come on and talk to him fuck it while out brett let's go <laughs> yeah it was munger uh, john edward guy have john edward come on and anyway so i was sort of <laughs> episode 234 brett has a seance the way he spoke about how he had succeeded in life so much of it resonated and it was so interesting that anyway i started down the path of chasing down wisdom of his and other videos um i will also say that listen if he if there is a heaven that guy is like really glad he's dead right now because he's like fuck I'm, i mean i you know being alive was pretty cool but it, I'm fucking before this guy tried to hit me up to fucking, fucking <laughs> talk to me for three hours on the phone i mean you know i passed on i don't know that's the way it goes gotta, gotta take the small <laughs> victories where we can get them and buffett on <laughs> Munger's death released a extremely uh, generous statement about his dead friend and basically said that Munger had been the secret uh, to Warren Buffett's success in large measure, which I thought that wasn't. That's what a rich guy says about another rich guy when the other rich guy's dead. Yeah, that's like, oh, I wouldn't. I don't know if I'd have been as, uh, successful actually without this guy. This guy was maybe he was Buffett's right hand. I don't know anything about the guy, but that's what you say, right? Like, like nope. if you, if like, if like, all, you know, three years down the line, this show was actually like popular, popular and you, you, you and I had become wealthy uh, off of it. And then I passed away. Wouldn't you go? Oh, well, I don't know. Uh, Dave's dead. That would be your eulogy speech. I don't know, man. I guess I have to find a new co-host. <laughs> Where's the bar? You go. Dave was the biggest asshole I've ever known. Fuck that guy. <laughs> also, he was the secret to my success. Where's the bar? <laughs> There's an open bar, right? An unusual thing. <laughs> They'd be like, yeah, asshole, you paid for it. Obviously, Warren Buffett is the more well-known person. Um, but, but that was apparently by design. Munger, didn't, Munger wanted to be in the shadows. Yeah. He did not want to be a, a public-facing figure. Yeah. So anyway, the, uh, all that is to say, this person had a lot of insight into the world. They're well worth listening to. Um, and that's, how, that's why I ended up buying the book. And, uh, and you swooped in and have... Matt Bowman, yeah, Nick Jennison, which are known Kaku hordes. So for people listening on the pod, uh, there's a soundboard here that people can make me play stuff on when the lights are red. Yeah. Um, so the mean one, especially as it gets later and I've had more to drink, is anything from the Madison Star Moon soundboard, especially if it's one that you think you heard one time, because this is the only uh, soundboard on this tablet that scrolls. And there's no search option. It's again called Poor Charlie's Almanac. And I'll put a link in the show notes. Um, so he is, it's a, it's a series, it's a bunch of intro. It's a little hard. It's, it's, it's a book that I'd like to have actually in print because um, it's hard. It's a little hard to tell yeah, she's his wife. Like background on Charlie versus one of his talks, but it's a series of his talks. And so in talk three, um, he is, I don't remember, even remember who his audience is here, but he's discussing California's worker compensation. Oh, Scientology. 
And in his estimation, kind of uh, ruin the show. they seem like a noble thing to do. <laughs> so that's where he starts. Says, yeah, it seems like a noble thing to do. But the problem with nobody the- wants to save the American penis. Quote, it is practically impossible to delete. Well, now I got to make one, too. Uh, because it was way easy, it, because it was so easy to cheat in California in particular, um, it created a uh, whole cadres of crooked lawyers and doctors and unions who were participating in referral schemes. So they were enriching themselves um, and working the system. You have to understand what the communists do with this, with this is urinate on everything. In discussing <laughs> this, you know, workers' compensation laws specifically as they manifest in California, a great idea. It seems like a, 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 a lovely thing to we're just taking a soundboard break. <laughs> a noble thing to do, um, but in practice, uh, you've got. We're going to watch the little line on the podcast analytic app. It's going to be like going down slowly as it does, and then all of a sudden, once the fucking chat starts fucking fucking with the podcast <laughs> listeners, it's going to go. <laughs> <laughs> like, why is he just playing? Why? What is it? The morning zoo? The rise of and then there's just going to be one guy who listened all the way through. <laughs> We're just working the system and enriching. Thank you to that guy. You're you're the real you're the real goat from Charlie Munger. You get a total be thousands of, of disastrous probably, behavior, but... and the behavior makes all the people worse as they do it. So you were trying to help your civilization, but what you did was create enormous damage. Disconnection would be an improvement. So it's much better to let some things go uncompensated, to let life be hard, than to create systems that are easy to cheat. This seems both so profound, so, like so obvious from a, from a game theoretic and evolutionary analysis perspective, and like perhaps exactly the point of difference. Rich guy saying that poor people in California that cheat, news at 11. people on the right and some people on the left, as we are, have with many people on the left which is do you feel that she's um promoting the website dambadandi.com compensated i don't have a soundboard from the gorth and that's more important than the system is so deeply flawed that there's a whole bunch of cheating in it or do you feel that a system which allows cheating is never the appropriate mode by which to try to correct a problem and that some people suffering hardships which not everyone suffer equally is actually a better outcome i have always even when i was you know absolutely 100 percent voting blue all the i like baked potatoes by the way guys so you can make a picture of me with a baked potato that'd be great thank you and that create winners where there shouldn't be any mm who we'd rather not lose. That wasn't uh, Gorka HK. That was uh, G. Willikers from the Rebels camp. That's not okay. I That's thought there was one of Gorka system. doing that. All right. Uh, we're going to go ahead not. and put a, put, a, <laughs> put a sock in the podcast part here. We're going to watch the rest <laughs> of this uh, during the post game. Hopefully, uh, <clears throat> hopefully everybody will chill the fuck out a little bit so that I might um, provide content. I know that... Uh, <laughs> I know that... Uh, the internet is a big dumpster. Is content of a sort. <laughs> <laughs> maybe everybody <laughs> fuck chill the fuck out um i don't know what this i don't know what they were reading but it sounded like rich person complains that poor people cheat um which is a common rich person oh rich person complains that poor people in california cheat because the laws allow them to so that was checking in on brett and heather we are going to watch the rest of this tonight um i have other stuff too um dr drew and adam carolla are back together again we're going to watch that um uh, I have oh Constantine boy. Kissin uh, saying that the big labor victory in uh, <coughs> in the UK is a sign of a rightward shift, which is stupid. And um, <laughs> I think uh, I forget somebody else went on Bill Maher's Playhouse that you wouldn't expect. And, oh, Penn Gillette uh, went on Bill Maher's Pee Wee's Playhouse show, so we may watch. That. Oh no, so I we can't all imagine. Stuff, like we have all kinds one. of stuff for the, we have all kinds of stuff for the post game. This is the post game's going out free to everybody. Um, if you are listening on the podcast, you can go to eplex.store or patreon.com slash echoplex, and you can um, uh, find the uh, free version of this show, and um, and also... Not only can you take a load, you can take the ultimate load, and even better than that, that you find your true calling and destiny in your willingness to take the ultimate load.